Elliot Abrams is on his way to Colombia, and uh, that can only mean one thing for Venezuelans, uh, imminent regime change. The Miami Herald is reporting that Abrams is uh, on his way to try and assist with uh, the uh, delivery of uh, humanitarian aid to uh, starving Venezuelans. Of course, when Elliot Abrams is involved, humanitarian aid is a becomes a, a very lofty term that means much more than uh, food and medical supplies. Given his uh, involvement so far, it is almost certain that it, uh, amongst this uh, humanitarian aid uh, is also weapons uh, intended for use against uh, Maduro's government. Abrams, of course, has a long history of, of assisting with violent U.S. intervention in Latin America. His latest move now uh, to Colombia was preceded by another trip by uh, Senator Marco Rubio, who is still there, apparently, and who Abrams will be joining. Rubio and Abrams, of course, are strong supporters of regime change for many years. It's hard to see their trips to Colombia as anything other than uh, an escalation on the part of the U.S. I think it would be uh, quite surprising uh, to see uh, either Rubio or Abrams leave Colombia before achieving their goals. And their main goal is certainly not uh, delivering humanitarian aid, despite what they might tell you. Despite uh, there appearing to be little movement internally uh, in Venezuela uh, in Guaido's direction, uh, outside of Venezuela, the screws have certainly started to turn on uh, Mr. Maduro. Uh, at Sitco, for example, the U.S. arm of uh, the Venezuelan state oil company, uh, many of the uh, Maduro loyalists at the highest levels of the company have been purged. And, of course, the assets of Sitco have been diverted away from uh, Maduro and towards uh, Guaido and his allies. And then, of course, there's uh, Brazil and Colombia, uh, Venezuela's uh, neighbors, uh, who have started to mount troops near the border, uh, you know, in, uh, ostensibly in, uh, in defense in case that there's any kind of uh, destabilization of the country, which, I mean, is a perfectly reasonable um, measure for them to take. Uh, but nevertheless, it is still a uh, would could could be seen as a threat by Maduro because uh, Colombia and Brazil are no fans of, or or allies of his. They're both uh, friendly with the U.S. and uh, not friendly with Venezuela. Maduro, in response, has uh, closed the borders with both Colombia and Brazil, which has only um, uh, given uh, Abrams and Rubio uh, all the more re uh, justification uh, to. Uh, go to Colombia to try and uh, help usher that humanitarian aid through now that uh, Maduro has uh, officially uh, denied any movement between the borders. But again, if you're smuggling food through the country, you can just as easily smuggle in uh, um, weapons, uh, bombs, rifles, uh, whatever sorts of things you need to overthrow the government. I've seen little development, though, on the uh, part of the, uh, the U.S. Um, with respect to direct intervention in Venezuela. I haven't seen, uh, you know, despite uh, John Bolton's 5,000 troops to Colombia note, um, 5,000 troops would not be enough to, uh, even if they were in Colombia already, uh, would not be enough to overthrow the government in Venezuela unless maybe there were 5,000 special forces guys that were going to somehow sweep into Caracas and execute all of um, Maduro's le leadership. Uh, but we haven't seen any carriers being moved into place, or, you know, off the, you know, in the uh, Caribbean or haven't seen any major troop movements, at least that I've, that I've noticed. I might be wrong, so uh, please uh, correct me in the comments if that, if that is incorrect. But at this point, it still seems uh, as though they're going to try and uh, execute this operation uh, through um, non-conventional warfare means, i.e., you know, the sanctions, proxies, all that, all that jazz. But again, beware, the, the U.S. has not softened its stance at all. It is still 100% committed to regime change, and I would not be surprised um, if the current approach does not pan out um, in a timely manner and does not achieve the goal of ousting Maduro. Uh, I would not be shocked to see uh, U.S. Uh, ground troops uh, start making its way uh, into the public debate. Because I think once uh, the uh, the administration pushes as hard as they're about to do, um, if they do not succeed, they will look like fools if they just back down at that point, and then I think Trump will be forced uh, to send in the tanks, so to speak. Now, interestingly enough, uh, despite their reputation as uh, uh, on uh, among right wingers as uh, being soft on. Uh, international relations and a bunch of peaceniks, uh, the Democrats writ large have uh, pretty much shied away from this story. Um, those who have not outright endorsed regime change in Venezuela have stayed silent on the matter. Um, 
most notably, uh, perhaps uh, Kamala Harris has made zero statement one way or the other. Um, bipartisan foreign policy consensus is alive and well in Washington, despite getting a lot of flack from uh, – um, the establishment, even Bernie Sanders has been pretty soft in his denunciation of uh, regime change. I mean, he I will give him credit, he has come out and said it, but you could tell that uh, he was not as forceful when speaking to Jorge Ramos as, uh, say, a Ron Paul or Tulsi Gabbard uh, would have been, uh, because Bernie sort of reluctantly uh, stated his position, whereas if you truly believe in, in peace, it should not be something that you are uncomfortable talking about. You should be able to make it very clear, and you should be kind of uh, disgusted with someone like Ramos for uh, assuming uh, that you would <clears throat> think any different. You know, the, the anti-war stance is a moral one, and if Bernie doesn't feel that way, if his anti-war stance is purely political, uh, meaning that he just happens to like America's enemies rather than uh, – you know, thinking that war is inherently wrong, well, then uh, he's not exactly the best anti-war candidate. You don't oppose a war because you don't you don't let you won't like the outcome. You should oppose a war because wars are evil. When you oppose a war because you simply like the uh, the government that is being targeted, well, then it makes it a little a little awkward for you to try and denounce uh, U.S. intervention in that case. Because then Bernie has to come right out and say, you know, either, oh, I, I just happen to like Maduro, which is a far less defensible position. Uh, because uh, Maduro is a scumbag. All these politicians are trash. I think that when all this in Venezuela is said and done this year, and it certainly will be wrapped up this year, um, <clears throat> Tulsi Gabbard will come out looking very clean because she has, from the beginning, uh, denounced this intervention and said it was none of them, none of America's business, and that, and so when uh, Trump uh, either ends up with Ega on his face or uh, sends in the tanks, uh, she will be end up, she'll end up looking pretty good because I don't think that'll be a popular move. I don't really know anyone other than perhaps uh, some Cuban folks uh, who would be okay, who would be satisfied having uh, their son or daughter uh, fight and die for Venezuela. I mean, a country that most people never really think about. I mean, I'm from Florida, so you know, I a lot of know a lot of people who are uh, of Latin American descent or from Latin America. So I mean, I think about Venezuela, and obviously the Cubans in Miami think a lot about Venezuela because they can relate to them as. Uh, you know, having escaped Castro, uh, the uh, the Chavez Castro uh, similarities, I think, uh, creates a lot of kinship between Venezuelan and Cuban expats, such as uh, Marco Rubio and his family. Uh, but Americans at large, you know, you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, Billy Johnson in Alabama. Uh, in his, if he hears that his son died in a, a battle in Venezuela, you think he's gonna, you know, I mean, you think that people are gonna be okay with that? I mean, maybe if the media's propaganda is as strong as it was in Iraq, you know, maybe it'll get by for a, a time. But I think that people, a lot of people in America, learn their lesson after the Iraq War that you know not all wars are good and patriotic. Some wars are just stupid. Well, anyway, if you've made it this far, uh, please uh, like and consider subscribing. Um, I will keep up the daily videos. Uh, hopefully, I'll start making some progress and people start watching uh, eventually. But hey, until then. Uh, I will keep using this as my daily vent uh, about the news, and I, I hope uh, some of you care to join me uh, along for the ride.